Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. Um, I thought we would have two videos today. I'm gonna read you a book about Vincent van Gogh. He's one of my very favorite artists and um, I thought it was great to read about him for a few reasons. Uh, yesterday was his birthday and he also did a lot of his work in, um, he actually lived in an asylum in France and an asylum is basically like a mental health hospital. So some of his most famous works like Starry Night and um, a lot of his really famous work he actually did at a time when he was in a hospital and sometimes he was okay and sometimes he'd kind of have bouts of being pretty sad and kind of like his mental health episodes. So um, I think this is a time that a lot of us are stuck inside and I know I'm sort of looking out a window a lot of days and I've been feeling sad too. Not not as sad as Vincent van Gogh, but just sad because I miss my students and because we don't know exactly what's going on. So I just love how beautiful the artwork that he made from that time was and it's a really good way to process being sad. So I have a couple other little things around here because I'm going to show you more about them in the next video. This video will get taken down in about a month because the publishers of this book, um, Corto Kids, are very generous in letting me read their books online, but in about a month we will take them down as part of that arrangement. So I have Hokusai's Wave up here, which we'll also do a project on, but he was a Japanese artist that um, Van Gogh was influenced by. You can probably see Starry Night underneath this. And then here's just a couple little buttons, I'll move them over, but... So he's sort of an artist that has... You see him on a lot of things now. He's pretty commercialized, meaning you can see him on tennis shoes and coffee cups, and here's a portrait of his. But at the time, when he started being an artist, he... Or when he was working as an artist in France, in Amsterdam, he only sold, I think, one painting in his lifetime. And he was really making a new type of artwork that people weren't ready for yet. So... It's really neat that he's celebrated now, but at the time in his life, he, he wasn't celebrated that way. So I think these are beautiful books. I'm going to get right to it. And today we're just going to read the book. And I'll put a neat link to a video I think is really cool about Starry Night um, in the comments. And then today we'll do another video about a project based on Vincent van Gogh. So here we go. So again, this is Portrait of an Artist. I really love this series. There's one more we're going to read in this series. Um, and I'll read that next week, probably. And it's illustrated by Edith Caron and written by Lucy Brownridge. And again, this was... Um, I was given permission to read this by Quarto Kids, the publisher. So thank you. Portrait of an Artist, Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh lived in the Netherlands... He had grown up in the shadow of his charismatic and exciting brother, Theo. Confident, Theo went off to make his fortune in Paris selling art. Quiet, thoughtful Vincent only felt confident when he was drawing. But inspired by Theo, he found a job working in an art gallery near his hometown. He loved the beautiful paintings in the gallery, but for some reason, he didn't feel happy and he knew something was missing. He just wasn't sure what. So in these books, you can spot, I think, 10 of the real artist's paintings. So this is an illustrator. And then 10 of his real paintings are kind of spotted in the book. So see if you can pick them out. He had heard that for some people, happiness came from serving God. So he moved to Belgium, where he became a priest and taught people how to love God. Although his new job was good, he missed being surrounded by art every day. He knew he must go home and think more about the, what it was that was missing from his life. So this is him, and here's a self-portrait he did. Back in the Netherlands, Vincent tried his hand at turning his drawings into paintings. The problem was, he couldn't find anything he found inspiring, and his paintings kept coming out a sludgy shade of brown. These brown paintings weren't selling. He soon ran out of money. Vincent was stuck but he knew who would know what to do, Theo. So Vincent wrote his brother a letter. Theo told Vincent to come to Paris immediately and together they would try and help him out of his gloomy phase. Theo knew lots of successful artists in Paris who might have some good tips. This is one of his early paintings, The Potato Eaters. Oh, I like 
this little spot. When Vincent arrived in Paris, something life-changing happened. He saw paintings by a group of artists we now call the Impressionists. And we read about the Impressionists last week when we read about um, Monet. So if you did not see our Monet reading in this series, go back to that video. The Impressionists used bright color and dancing brush strokes to paint how things looked in a fleeting moment. Vincent was amazed. He instantly started painting with bright colors and with a new energy in his brush. He called this new way of painting color gymnastics. His friend said this was the moment when Vincent changed from a shy young man into a singing bird. Vincent started painting new friends he made in Paris, including art dealers and other artists. One of his new friends was a painter named Paul Gauguin. Paul had also given up his old job to become an artist. Vincent, Paul wanted to move to the countryside and paint. Vincent thought it sounded like a wonderful idea and asked if he could come too. Vincent filled his bag with rolled up canvases and new bright chemical paints and off he went with Paul. The pair moved to a yellow house in a town called Aro. At first they were very happy. Vincent made paintings of the house and the bedroom and everything he saw. And if you go to Chicago at the Institute of Art, you can see this painting. I have a picture of me with it, so maybe I'll post it in the next video. But Vincent started acting unpredictably and his paintings became more and more frantic. He started painting manically. He couldn't stop. And over the next few years, he made nearly 2,000 works of art. Vincent took himself for very long walks. He was overwhelmed by the beauty in the swirling leaves on the trees and the warm orange colors of the fields. He felt as though things couldn't get enough. He felt as though, maybe a little air. He felt as though he couldn't get enough of the world around him and he couldn't paint it fast enough. This is one of my favorite paintings of his cypress trees. Sometimes he gathered flowers from his walks and their beautiful garden and made careful paintings of them. This is one of his most famous paintings. Maybe you recognize it from the button. One day he became so frantic, he had an argument with Paul. In a heated moment, he damaged a part of his ear very badly. So we can talk about all this another time. There's kind of a lot of different stories about what really happened and if he cut off his ear and it's sort of something people talk about and even dolls made with him have ears cut off. But I wouldn't let that one thing be the whole thing you remember about Vincent van Gogh because we don't really know what happened. And I think the rest of his life was such an important story that it is something that happened but it shouldn't be the only thing you remember about him. So that's my little piece about that. Vincent knew that hurting himself wasn't a good response to being upset with Paul, so he took himself to a hospital to get better. And I have actually stood in this window and been to this hospital in France when I was in school in France 20 years ago. So it's a pretty special painting to me, and we'll talk about that more in the next one. While he was there, he com comforted himself by painting the view from his bedroom window. In his diary, he wrote that the stars made him dream and he thought that the night looked more alive than in the day. So I just want to show you something and I know I'm interrupting a lot, but I can't oh. A lot of people think that Hokusai's wave, this famous painting, influenced Starry Night. And if you look at them together, you can see some of the influences. Vincent felt very alone when he was in the hospital and he hadn't heard from Theo for a long time. He felt as though the only person who understood how he felt was his kind young doctor, Dr. Felix Ray. In the spring, Vincent left the hospital and wrote to his beloved brother, Theo, which made him feel a bit better. Although he was still very unwell, Vincent found the joy he had been searching for in painting the cornfields and landscape around him. But later on that year, Vincent decided that he had had enough of being unwell. His last painting was of a beautiful cornfield. When he died, he could hear the gentle, gently rustling corn that had given him so much joy and inspiration. Vincent had found what he was truly best at and most importantly, what inspired him. 
He left behind thousands of his most wonderful creations, some of which are among the most famous and loved paintings in the world. So these are the paintings. I know I pointed some of them out. Let's see if you spotted all of them in the book. And this is the last um, ever known painting we filled with crows that he did. But he did Starry Night not too far from when he passed away. So I love his work. We will do a project on him and I'm sure more things. But I just wanted to share that book with you. I'm going to do with this little portrait of him. Yesterday was his birthday. And I'm going to have a fun assignment coming up. Have a great Tuesday.